Hey, jump into those jammies and stay up for NBC Saturday Night Live with the best of Mike Myers. Your local news is next. Have you had it with shopping in the malls? Well, millions of people avoid the crowds by shopping online. But before you start clicking your mouse, we have a consumer alert for you. And the last Bedlam Battle of the Millennium, we have live team coverage next at 10. Expect the news first. This is Oklahoma's News Channel 4 at 10. It was a history-making day on Owen Field as the Sooners took on the Cowboys in the last Bedlam Battle of the Millennium. Good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Teresa Green. And I'm Lance West. And we begin tonight with the last Bedlam Battle of the Millennium. Depending on what side you're on, it was a day to go down in history or maybe a day you'd like to forget. The Sooners win handily by a score of 44-7. to But not all the action today was on the football field. News Channel 4, Sarah Fisher has been in Norman all day long. She joined us live this evening with more on that. Sarah? Well, Lance, all is calm here in Norman right now, but earlier today, Sooner fans were in a frenzy after their bedlam victory over the Cowboys, a rivalry that has intensified over the years. Take a look. Uh, well, you know, you try to look for the better games of the uh, college playoffs and uh, let's see who's in the, uh, who's got the best records and, and go for those games. And ticket scalpers definitely found their game. They were going for 75 and 80 for good seats. Many people were also trying to profit illegally by selling these orange pass-out checks. People are trying to sell the orange pass. Uh, what I'm hearing is upwards of $40. And our rules are if you don't have both the ticket stub and the orange pass, you're not permitted to get in the ballgame. So they're spending $40 for a ticket, and they're not getting in, gaining entry. But if there's one ticket taker who can't be fooled, it's number 83, Anthony Liss, who's been taking tickets for 26 years at gate 22. People come through the gate, my former students, neighbors, and family. Most of the fans at the game haven't been through 26 bedlams, but they still have an appreciation for the rivalry. Oh, I love it. I mean, it's always fun, and uh, we're all in the same state. We love each other, except for today. In the last two years here, we've got a eat crow, but not, not today. So while the Sooners are headed to a bowl game, Oklahoma State will stay at home and look forward to next year. Next year in Stillwater, they're going down. I guess that remains to be seen. But that ticket taker that we talked to, who's been doing that for 26 years, was also a professor here at OU for a long time, but interestingly enough, He's an OSU graduate, so it seems a lot of people in the state have loyalties to both schools and are happy when both schools succeed. Lance. Sarah Fisher reporting live. Thank you. And coming up in sports, we will have live team coverage of all the action on and off the field. We'll have reports from Bob Berry, Bob Berry Jr., Brian Brinkley, and Van Shea Ivan coming up in about 15 minutes. You know, some retailers wondered if Bedlam might steal some thunder from a big post-Thanksgiving shopping Saturday. Business was brisk at the Target at Quail Springs yesterday, and at most local stores, they've gotten off to a great start. But the big game in Norman had some store managers a little concerned about what kind of crowds they might see today. Well, we did some checking, and tonight, the stores tell us their worries did not materialize. The crowds were down a bit from yesterday, but right on target for the Saturday after Thanksgiving. Now... First weather from the forewarned storm team. Yeah, the clouds rolled in about the third quarter of the game, but other than that, it turned out to be mostly sunny during the day today. Take a look at how we did in central Oklahoma. The temperature this afternoon made it up to 70 degrees. That is not normal, my friend. This time of year, we normally see temperature around 56. The record high, though, is 82 from 1904 and a cold record low of 16 degrees. Looks like for tomorrow morning, temperatures not quite as cold across Oklahoma. And temperatures tomorrow afternoon, not quite as warm. We're also going to take a look back at the November stats and show you just how warm it's been. All the weather is coming up in about 10 minutes. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Dan. We have word of breaking news at this hour. There has apparently been a shooting in the 5400 block of South Independence. We know that one man has been transported to a metro hospital with a gunshot wound. We don't know the extent of his injuries. Police are on the scene investigating. We also have a crew on the scene, and we'll bring you more as we get more information. Have you noticed a bad taste in the drinking water? Many folks in the metro have, and we have new inf information tonight on the cause of that bad water. Remember this from last weekend? That's when a 72-inch water main broke. Now, because of that, water from Lake Overholzer is being used by many metro families. And because of processing, Overholzer water does have a different taste and odor than what you're used to. Authorities tell us the water is safe to drink, and they should have it all cleared up within the next couple of weeks. 
We have new information tonight on former boxing champion Tommy Morrison. He's out of jail on bond after a new arrest on charges of public intoxication. The latest incident happened on Thanksgiving Day. The 30-year-old was released after paying more than $700 bail. Now, you may recall in September, Morrison received a suspended sentence for a drunk driving charge out of Tulsa County. And we have a news channel for a follow-up tonight on the wrongful death lawsuit filed by wrestler David Schultz's wife. The former OU and Olympic athlete was shot and killed in 1996. John DuPont was found guilty but mentally ill in that shooting. Well, we can tell you Schultz's widow has now settled her case against DuPont. The settlement was not made public, but one Philadelphia paper citing an anonymous source reports the deal is worth at least $35 million. Religious leaders in Chicago are asking Southern Baptists not to send thousands of missionaries to their city next summer. The interdenominational coalition claims such an act could spark hate crimes against Jews, Hindus, and Muslims. The Nashville-based Southern Baptists have issued a prayer booklet aimed at converting members of those religious groups to Christianity. A spokesperson for the Southern Baptist says his group only wants to peacefully spread the Christian gospel to all people. your child tonight. You know, Santa has a list of those kids who are nice and those who are naughty, and now there's a list of naughty toys, too. An Episcopalian minister just put out his annual list of warped toys, and topping that list, a toy called Hatchet. It is a student brought back from the dead to wreak pain and havoc. The doll comes with a weapon, shovel, and a handful of bloody body parts. Also on the list, the entire line of pro wrestling toys. The minister says those promote fighting between men and women at a time when domestic violence is a serious issue. Earlier, we told you that business was brisk today in local malls and stores, but not everybody is doing their holiday shopping the old-fashioned way. In fact, online retailers say this year they'll do some $6 billion in business. But before you start spending your hard-earned money online, you might want to try a before-you-buy website. It reviews products and merchandise from people who've already took those products on themselves. A simple goal is empower consumers, um, empower them with lots of information, with shared knowledge and with factual information. And before you buy, you might want to check out Deja.com website. You'll also find some great ideas for some of those hard to buy people on your Christmas list, like Teresa Green. I was just thinking about <laughs> the same of you. <laughs> well, anorexia is often a fatal battle most commonly fought by teenage girls. Now researchers say they may be able to spot anorexic kids before they start losing weight. We'll have the details and health check. And later, it has been a busy day for our entire sports team, and it's not over yet. More team coverage of today's Bedlam battle coming up later on Oklahoma's News Channel 410. Expect the news first on Oklahoma's News Channel 4 with Teresa Green, Lance West, the forewarned storm team's Dan Threlkeld, and Brian Brinkley with sports. You wave goodbye to your children when they get on the school bus, but do you know who's behind the wheel? We found prostitution, convicted drunk drivers, and felons. People you wouldn't expect to be alone with children. School bus drivers have their records revealed. Monday at 10 on Oklahoma's News Channel 4. Would you like the state to pay for your membership to a health club or for your diet program? They're doing it for some Oklahomans. Lance West investigates where thousands of our tax dollars are really going. It's a public defender's special report Tuesday at 10 on Oklahoma's News Channel 4. space you really need the refreshingly roomy accord from honda the accord for the year 2000 now lease a new accord lx for 229 a month for 36 months it's the way to enjoy spicy buffalo chicken without the bones introducing subway's buffalo chicken sandwich with frank's red hot buffalo sauce and cool ranch dressing subway the way a sandwich should be New worlds are not discovered on old maps. Oklahoma leaders are scrapping old, worn-out regulations. Under the new telecommunications plan, Southwestern Bell will invest $200 million in high-speed internet connections and digital switching for families, schools, and businesses. Southwestern Bell will invest $30 million in technology for our schools. In Oklahoma, when the old maps are discarded, the new world will be our own. You know, thanks to your generosity, more than 2,000 Oklahomans received free coats last year, but more donations are needed. 
To make winter warmer for thousands more, all you have to do is drop coats off at cleaners displaying this warmth for winter's time. Oklahoma's News Channel 4, always first for Oklahoma. In Health Check tonight, new information on the third most common chronic illness in teenage girls. Research may now help families identify children at risk of anorexia before it strikes. With a diet of sliced apples and lean turkey, it may take a while for Megan to gain back what she's lost, 40 pounds in three months. She still battles the powerful force that compelled her to starve herself. I just had to do this. I had to get real skinny. I didn't matter what was going to happen. I didn't care if I died. I was like, I just have to get skinny. For many experts, attributing anorexia to societal factors, peer pressure, and popular culture could not fully explain the powerful grip it has on its victims. Now, recent research suggests genetics plays a role. Scientists believe a gene or gene cluster can contribute to the disease, which means it's something that can be passed down family lines. I think if there's an eating disorder or more than one individual in a family with an eating disorder, that family should be aware that other family members are more at risk. It makes a lot of sense to me because I think that my grandmother has bulimia. Research is still underway to identify the gene or gene cluster, but experts say in the meantime, families with a history of eating disorders need to be keenly aware of the warning signs. That is because the earlier anorexia is identified and the sooner a child gets into treatment with someone who specializes in treating eating disorders, the better the prognosis overall. That's Health Check, Lance. Back to you. Thank you, Teresa. It has been an absolutely picture-perfect holiday weekend, but Dan Threlkeld says there might be some changes in that seven-day, Dan. That's right. If you didn't get your Christmas lights up today, we'll take a look at how it looks like for tomorrow. And also, there is some rain showing up on the seven-day. A complete look is next here on Oklahoma's News Channel 4. I see skies of blue and clouds of white. And I think to myself. Discover Estee Lauder pleasures and Lauder pleasures for men. New pleasures, new surprises. For her, shower gel, smoothing spray, perfume, and scented candle. For him, cologne spray, shaving balm, and travel clock. Now at Dillard's. We interrupt your regular programming for an important announcement. Nissan is holding a previously unannounced Thanksgiving event for one week only. Nissan is offering their year-end inventory savings now. now. Like any new 2000 Altima with $1,000 cash back. And select Nissan Frontiers with $1,000 cash back. Plus, get 5.9% APR financing and make no payments till the year 2000. Tape the game, skip the reruns. This opportunity can't be missed. See your nearest Nissan retailer today. New worlds are not discovered on old maps. Oklahoma leaders are scrapping old, worn-out regulations. Under the new telecommunications plan, Southwestern Bell will invest $200 million in high-speed internet connections and digital switching for families, schools, and businesses. Southwestern Bell will invest $30 million in technology for our schools. In Oklahoma, when the old maps are discarded, the new world will be our own. This is living in Oklahoma. Your style. Oh, Brothers Furniture. Lane recliners make a super gift for the holiday. Recliners by Lane start at only $1.99. These recliners feature comfort that you or that special person in your life deserve. From massage or heat or even built-in phones, Lane has thought of every comfort feature imaginable. These chairs are in stock now through the holidays. Mathis Brothers Furniture. The most accurate forecast with the Forewarn Storm Team's Dan Threlkel. Most would agree that this state has been very dry, especially across central and western Oklahoma. The last system that came through didn't provide us with much in the way of rain, but what about the temperatures this month? Well, we'll show you the stats on that, and it also shows a very warm month. Hey, today turned out to be warm, had a lot of sunshine, then right towards sunset, we saw a lot of clouds filtering across central Oklahoma. Had it not been for that, we could have easily uh, probably seen temperatures one or two degrees warmer. 52 tonight, fair skies. The winds are from the northeast at 6. Our humidity at 59%, and the pressure is rising at 30.10. Let's take a look at our November highs. Well, the high temperature, the average high, 71. Normal high temperature is 61. So on average, so far this month, 10 degrees above normal for the high. Normal low is 39. So far this month, 44 degrees. So not only has it been very dry, it's also been extremely warm 
this November. Temperatures tonight are cooling off rather slowly in the 40s and the 50s across Oklahoma. Fair to partly cloudy skies. Those clouds will thin out by morning. I think for tomorrow we're looking at fair to partly cloudy skies and temperatures maybe a few degrees cooler. Why? A cold front that's worked its way through the state. That's shifting those winds around to a northeasterly direction. Let's take a look at what we've got across central Oklahoma, and we'll show you some of the temperatures across the region from Logan County down towards McLean and Cleveland County. Purcell at 48 degrees out towards the El Reno area. Temperatures a few degrees cooler. Here in the metro area, we'll zoom into that and show you some of the temperatures uh, across parts of central Oklahoma. Right now, Bethany at 52, Edmond 51, Midwest City coming in with a temperature of 50 degrees. Here's a look at the satellite shot. And across the area again for today, we did see a few clouds. The clouds are kind of thin out. The frontal system that's working its way through the uh, Oklahoma area will come through dry. Now, it has generated a few little showers across parts of Nebraska, southern section of South Dakota. That is not going to move towards Oklahoma. This stuff is rapidly racing to the east. Again, we'll see a few clouds out of this front. Unfortunately, not much in the way of rain. Here's my forecast map for tomorrow. And we'll show you that. The frontal system that uh, worked its way through Oklahoma by tomorrow is going to be down to our south. And tomorrow's forecast map does show that uh, down to the south of Oklahoma. There it is. And during the day, again, the front continues to plow, mainly in a southern, southeasterly direction. High pressure in control will help push this front further to the south. So we're looking at northeasterly winds across Oklahoma for tomorrow. Just a few degrees cooler, but still a pretty nice day out there. 30s and 40s by Sunday morning with those northerly winds and, and fair skies. 45 degrees in McAllister. Woodward at 34 degrees. Ponca City at 39. Here's the temperatures for Sunday afternoon. 65 in McAllister. Ponca City at 59 degrees. Down towards Duncan and Marlowe. And Comanche, temperature about 63 degrees. Also looking pretty good in Garber and Enid at 58. Here's the forecast for tonight. Low 50s, 41 by Sunday morning. And by the afternoon, I'm forecasting 62. So that's an 8-degree cool-off for tomorrow. And those northeast winds, about 10 to 15 on average. Seven-day forecast, not much in the way of weather changes until we get into Thursday and Friday. And then we'll see temperatures tumble just a bit. Temperatures falling into the low 50s for highs. And there is a 30% chance for some Needed rain for Thursday and Friday, and notice the lows back into the 30s by Friday and Saturday. One of the models is kind of teasing us just a little bit, saying that maybe some of that rain could be maybe not rain and some solids, uh -huh. but again, it's a little premature on that, but uh, we'll watch that closely over the next couple of days. Some right. hints for the contest? Uh, that's right. <laughs> Snow contest is continuing. We'll give you the address tomorrow night. All right. Thanks, Dan. Yeah. Up next in sports, the Bedlam Series was colored crimson and cream today. Our entire team was in Norman for the big, big, the big game, including Bob Berry Jr. Bobby? I'm Bob Berry Jr. in Norman, where Bedlam Series bragging rights go to the Sooners this year. We'll have a complete report and team coverage on OU LSU coming up next on Oklahoma's New Channel 4. It's a 4x2 with the high riding suspension of a 4x4. The Mazda B Series Troy Lee Edition truck. Kind of makes you wish all roads were off road. about you and love you. Family is people that you can depend on and is always there for you and is willing to help you out whenever you need help. A family is a mom and dad and brother and sister. Family means like loving each other and not like having a fight every time. People that don't beat you. Someone that loves and cares for you. What is family to you? For many of these children, family has been a source of pain or conflict. They've dreamed of a better life and safer home. Hello, I'm Kathy Keating. November is Adoption Awareness Month in Oklahoma, and there are more than 1,600 children in our state waiting for loving homes. Consider adoption. For information, call 1-877-OK-SWIFT-ADOPT. -OK it may be the toughest job you'll ever love. Now, sports with Brian Brinkley. Neither Oklahoma nor Oklahoma State ever need much motivation to win the Bedlam game, but this year there were higher stakes, with OSU trying to get qualified for a bowl and OU hoping to improve their bowl status and end a two-game losing streak to the Cowboys. Our team coverage begins with Bob Berry Jr., who shows us the Sooners sailing in the biggest Bedlam bashing since 1980. 
The bedlam bashing actually began before the two bitter rivals even kicked off with pushing and shoving during warm-up. And the sellout crowd of 75,374 saw basically a couple of teams pretty anxious. OU fumbled the ball away on their first offensive play as Jack Golden recovered at the Sooners' 10-yard line. But then, on the very next snap, the game turned around. OSU tried to reverse, and they dropped the ball. Armand Spence fell on it for the Sooners, and the Pokes' offense never recovered. At least Bob Simmons had a defense that was tough for a half. Terrell Nalls picked off the Josh Heupel pass and ran it all the way back to the tying touchdown. But OU took advantage of a bad OSU punt, which led to Seth Luttrell's short TD, and the Sooners led 14-7 at the break. Then, very early in the third, the Big Red started the big route. The defense dominated, and then the first home team home run. Hypo backs up, blitz is on, Sooners pick it up beautifully. Long pass down the middle, has a man, caught the 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown Oklahoma, no flags. That was Curtis Fagan. And that was a 73-yard play, the first of a series of major scoring moves Outside, after that. Uh, Senior Mike said, Woods picked off the Lindsay pass, pass and ran untouched 43 yards 30, for the score 25, to make it 38 to 7. And JT Thatcher later latched onto this Scott Elder punt and after the, spinning uh, 20, away from 20, trouble, rambled 30, 81 yards for the final touchdown. Oklahoma ended Oklahoma State's season for good, snapping the Cowboys' two-game Bedlam Series winning streak, winning 44-7. Touchdown, Oklahoma. So the Sooner defense actually pitches a shutout today. OSU's only points coming on the interception return. And Oklahoma now has a seven-game home winning streak, and they complete their first five-win season in the conference since 1991. Also, the big news, they are definitely going to a bowl game. Oh, the question will be... I think Bob Berry was in the Sooner's victorious locker well, Bob, I don't have to tell you what the situation was in the OU locker room. A lot of celebrating. Seventh win of the year, seven and four, and definitely going to a bowl game. Here's what they had to say. I think the biggest part of the game, special teams and our defense, is the biggest part of the game. Uh, their offensive players were all there. Tony Lindsay's back from a year ago. And, and um, heck, to be able to shut them out, come up with the turnovers. We had field position all day. I think overall, the the biggest part of our offense today is our defense uh, keeping us in great field position. I thought we did uh, did really well on defense. Obviously, we came out came out with a shutout, and uh, I was pretty pleased with the way we played. The uh, everyone stepped up a level, and uh, we did really well. Beating up on no state, and you know, since they they got the last two times, uh, they got the best of us. No doubt, it feels real good. It feels real great. And so the Sooners win it big time, 44 to seven. And with a seven and four record, they have a chance at a choice of bowl games, I would guess. But we'll find out more about that later. Let's go now to Vanche Ivan at the Oklahoma State dressing room. Vanche? What a difference a couple of years makes. Two years ago here in Norman, the Cowboy offense scored 31 points. Last year in Stillwater, 41. Today, oh, you shut out the OSU offense. As a result, the Cowboy season ends at five and six. Uh, we didn't play as well as we'd like to have played. Uh, we can't do anything about that. Uh, we got to do is regroup. Uh, we got a lot of young guys in this program. We got a nice senior class coming back, uh, and so I'm pretty I'm pleased with this this program and where we are. I mean, everybody had aspirations of going to to a bowl game, and go and uh, you know just extend the season one more one more game. You know, unfortunately, it didn't come out that way. I'm very disappointed at this season. You know, we had a lot of higher expectations, and we didn't you know complete our goals. I mean, it's real tough, you know, to end it here and, you know, knowing it's my last game, but, hey, I'm, I'm really happy that I got a chance to, you know, come to OSU and establish something that hasn't been established in I don't know how many years. So it feels real good that, you know, I was able to play on this team. Vane Shea, Ivan, Oklahoma's News Channel 4 Sports. Oh, you should find out next weekend which bowl they will be playing in. Two other college football teams from our state are already competing in the postseason, and both were winners today. Northwestern defeated Lambeth in the NAIA playoff. They are on to the semifinals next weekend. Likely will host that game in Alva in the NCAA Division II playoffs. Northeastern defeated Cal Davis 19-14, so Northeastern moves on in the Division II playoffs. Tennessee routed Vanderbilt in major college football, and Georgia Tech in a wild game beat Georgia 51-48 in overtime. Time, Notre Dame trails Stanford 37-29 in the fourth quarter on the West Coast. The high school football playoffs continue today with semifinal action in most classes and quarterfinal play in classes 2A and A. 6A tonight at Lewis Field in Stillwater. Tulsa Union against Putnam City North. North took a 14-10 lead in the third quarter. Adam Boyd to Allen Ives for the touchdown, but Tulsa Union won at Jason York in the touchdown run. Union wins 24-14. They will play Jinx for the state championship next weekend for the second straight season. Class 3A quarterfinal play uh, 
semifinal play, I should say. Tulsa Cashaw Hall against Deer Creek. Cashaw Hall jumped on top 28 to nothing. Chris Pappen scored there for Deer Creek, but it's been all Cashaw Hall. They lead at 49-21 in the fourth. Class A quarterfinal play, Dewar at Luther. Dusty Allen, the six-yard touchdown pass to Larry Mansell for the touchdown, and Luther rolled to the easy win, 27-6. They move on to the semifinals. And a Class B semifinal game today, Morrison playing uh, Burns Flat, Dill City. Mark St. John, the great play fake there, and the 20-yard touchdown pass to Bryce Field. Burns Flat wins at 32 to 6 today as they move on to the Class B championship game. In 6A, Jinx routed Lot Nike. Again, Jinx will play Tulsa Union next weekend. And in 4A, Fort Gibson upset Clinton 24 to 23. Fort Gibson will play Weatherford in the 4A title game next weekend. Weatherford a winner over Poto. In 3A, Bristow over Holdenville 28 to 7 the final. Davis over Heritage Hall 34 to 11 in Class 2A. Now that Big 12 football is over, save for the championship game, basketball is underway, and Kelvin Sampson's Oklahoma Sooners home tonight to play Cal Irvine. Tim Heskett, the three-pointer here for the Sooners, but they had a fight on their hands today from Cal Irvine. Cal Irvine got to a 36-32 lead at halftime here, uh, but Oklahoma is leading this game now 71-56 in the second half. Looks like the Sooners will win. Eddie Sutton's team home tonight to play North Texas, and it was all Cowboys. Frederick John Zian with a layup there, and the Cowboys roll over North Texas 103-60. Glendon Alexander had 19. OSU hosts Wichita State on Wednesday. All right. Thank you, Brian. We'll be right back on Oklahoma's News Channel 4. The face of the news is getting younger every day. For a new generation of issues, this is your news. The Oklahoman at 1-800-375-NEWS. This is living in Oklahoma. Shop Mathis Brothers for the holidays. This year's selection of jewelry boxes starts at only $3.95 and goes to $17.95. There's surely a model to fill your needs. At just $9.95, choose from this selection in oak or whitewash. And at $17.95, choose this cherry sewing kit, this magazine rack, or this baker's rack. Mathis Brothers Furniture. Every day at 4.30, you're going to find something different. Linda Cavanaugh and Oklahoma's News Channel 4 at 4.30. Sure, you'll get all the news of the day, but there's so much more. Live studio audiences talk about the things that affect your life. Tips to help with tough parenting issues. Consumer information that can save you money. And answers to your health and medical questions. It's different day to day. Oklahoma's News Channel 4 at 4.30 with Linda Cavanaugh. Expect something different. Expect the news first. Appreciate Oklahoma Now. Seven new feature sections with a world of information for women in the changing face of the Oklahoman at 1-800-375-NEWS. How about a check of our Sunday morning forecast? Well, it looks like for tomorrow morning, not as cool. About 41 to start the day by the afternoon, 62. A few clouds rolling in towards Wednesday and Thursday. That's when our next chance of rain will be. We sure need it. It's getting dry. Mm -hmm. And the best of Mike Myers coming up on Saturday Night Live. That's next. Have a great night. See you back here tomorrow. Good night, everyone.